media registration tonight. Some of your questions also. So I'm working with my colleagues, my colleague that's uh, right at the back, Mrs. Uh, Claudia Trotzi. We're the one who are trying to uh, help you out to make the transition for the composting collection. So tonight, uh, Mrs. Uh, Hutchison is going to present you uh, this information uh, session for you to understand uh, what are the objectives of the city and how to um, do everything properly. So hopefully you'll all enjoy it. So have a good evening. So we won't spend the whole evening together, don't worry. It's about 45 minutes with a 15 minutes uh, question period at the end, but we're not a big group. So maybe if you have questions, you can just raise your hand and I'll try and answer them au fur et à mesure. So I just gave a French one. So I'm really sorry if sometimes there's French words that comes out and uh, I'm gonna really try and concentrate and put my English back on. Are you guys ready? Good. So you saw just before there was a huge group here and now it's a smaller group so it's a bit more intimate but it's going to be fun. <laughs> it's starting to get late so. <laughs> um, so to start with, um, did everybody already start their brown bin food waste program? Just Yes? Good. So did everyone get their new friend? Yeah, it, did anybody didn't get it? If there's anything you didn't get, in which I'm gonna just show you, you can always at the end go at the table and advise the person from the city that you did not get something. So just wanna make sure, did you all get this big bag? One big bag, then there was five small bags. Uh, you got, in French, this, uh, pamphlet of what you can put in there. And then you got also a little sticker in French. Nothing was made in English, unfortunately. And then you got this kitchen bin, right? You're all set. <laughs> so to start, I'll um, check out how much you know about waste. So how much do you think every Quebecer makes? The, what amount of waste that they make every year? So who here thinks it's 117 kilos per year? Just raise your hand. No one, okay. Uh, who thinks it's about 396 kilos every year? Oh, yeah, that okay, could be right. Uh, who thinks it's 524 kilos? It's incredible, everybody thinks it's always the highest one. You really think we're that bad? <laughs> but no, we're not that bad, but we are in middle bad. We are at 396 kilos per person. So from the little baby that's just born to the oldest person here in Quebec, we make 300 kilos, uh, 396 kilograms of waste, and that's every year. So do you think here in vaudreuil dorion we are better than most Quebecers or we are worse? So let's see. Who thinks that we are way better in vaudreuil dorion yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's good. And who thinks that we are really worse than the rest of Quebec? Not much. Well, sorry to tell you that you're worse. <laughs> yeah, far and 481 kilograms per person is made here in vaudreuil dorion So in, that's in 2016, and it's about the same every year, and it even it increases sometimes. What kind of waste do you make here? So this is only waste in our homes. So this does not include industries, or the little restaurant, or the dépanneur. So it's only what you put inside your homes and what's picked up. Like, waste is 360 kilos, so everything that goes to landfill in your bin, then there's the recycling, 111, and the organics, which is 10. So the organics was mainly all the green waste, the green residues that you've put on the curbside. So that is the 481. But, there's a big but. 
To that number, we have to add a bit more kilograms because there's more waste than that that you do. In our houses, we also make waste other materials, which are the clothes, which are the uh, construction res residues and the um, dangerous goods. So all of that equals to more than 500 kilos per person per year here in vaudreuil dorion So I think we have some work to do. Do you agree? Yeah. <laughs> so if we go just back here for uh, the quantities for the total of vaudreuil dorion it's 22 million kilograms every year that's made. But what is 22 million kilos? It's a big number. What does it mean? So I translated 22 million kilos in things that we know. For example, elephants. So we have 3,667 elephants. That's the equivalent of 22 million kilos. Elephants are big. Of course, we don't see them that much in our streets, so I've tried to put something we see a bit more. I'm not even sure if that if there's that many volts on the road in Quebec now. So it's uh, 12,700 volts equivalent. Or if we would like better something that's more closer to us, does any people sometimes move here? Like moving from one house to another? What's the uh, heaviest appliance that we have to move? The fridge, uh, something's heavier than that. Washer? I think the washer is heavy, <laughs> but see, I, I took the washer, it's 314,000 washers. That's equivalent to the 22 million kilograms, which is a lot. And we have to keep in mind that this is every year. So every year it's this equivalent of quantities that is produced here in vaudreuil dorion and that is mainly sent to landfill. Because as we saw that the first slide, which was 360 kilos per person to landfill. But what is in our waste? I think I already gave you a bit of examples of what we found, find in there. So we have all the recycling materials. Because I speak waste, but we could also speak about residual materials. But it doesn't ring a bell to people here. So that's why I speak at large of waste, which is things that we don't want to use anymore. So we have all the recycling. Whoops. We have all the food, uh, the food and organics. We have the construction waste. We have all the bulky waste. We have everything that's the clothing and textiles. And we have the dangerous goods. So when we do studies here in Quebec, we really like to make studies and see what we put inside our different bins and see what where we could put more um, efforts into lowering that to landfill. So, what do you think that we have mostly in what we put on the curbside? So, who thinks here it's uh, recycling? Yeah, the more, the most. What do we have most? Is it recycling materials? Not much. Is it um, organics? Uh, maybe. Uh, could it be the construction? Is it that that makes it that heavy? Or bulky material? Yeah. Uh, we're not too sure, eh? Maybe bulky because it's heavy. But it's really the organics, which is almost half of everything that we put on the curbside is organic material. So it doesn't look like that, but it's really the one that we make the most. So we have here, in Quebec, what we do is 47%. So if we take everything that you put on the curbside, then we just separate it and weigh it. What we find mostly in there is organics, which is everything that you do in your house, in your, sorry, in your house, like food waste, or everything that's then outside, like the leaves and the um, the um, the grass. Thank you. Reste du paysage, and uh, then you have everything that's recycling is 35%. So only with the organics and the recycling, it's a lot of waste that you can pull out of what you put in your garbage and send somewhere else. Because at the end, what's really garbage, what really should go to landfill, as you can see, is only 
about 10%. But it's not that that's really happening right now. Right now, it's way more that we send to landfill. If we look at what's done, it's for 47% 47, 47 is composting and only 6% actually goes to that place. It's a bit more today because this was in 2016 and right now a lot of municipalities are putting in place this new friend brown bin on place. But if we look at the uh, recycling, which has been in place for quite a long time, it's a bit more than 10 years everywhere, we're up to only 22%. That's going to the recycling, which should be 35. So then we can see landfill, which should be only 10% that goes to landfill. We're here at 74%. So we do have a lot of work to do because this should not be 74% because you have all the services to be able to put less in that landfill and much more elsewhere. And the 10%, I always like to say that number is always decreasing. When I started to work in uh, waste management, waste education, at that point it was about 20% of everything that we put on the curbside that was not either recyclable or compost, compostable. Reason is technology, which is a really good thing, technology, because sometimes it develops new technology to recycle different things. So, for example, 15 years ago, we could not put any Tetra Pak inside our recycling bin. And today we can. Why? Hmm. Because Tetra Pak really wanted to keep their products on the market. So they've decided to make sure that their products are recyclable. And they did study, they did put in money to do research to find out how can we recycle Tetra Paks. Yes. What is Tetra Packs? Ah, oh, that's a good, good question, eh? You know those juice boxes? The little juice boxes that you put the straw in there, the little ones or the big ones, Oasis? Or there's, um, it's, a, it's like a carton, carton. It's not milk containers, no. Tetra Packs is really the one that, they're, they're for food, and they're always like a little, um, a little box on the side, but really the juice boxes are the best example of Tetra Packs. And juice boxes are the big juices. Yes? Here in the recycling is really the bin that's in your, that's picked up in your house. It doesn't Okay, so the question is, the, the, the recycling, what does it really take, what, what is it really? This is only what's pick and picked up at your house. So in this 74% is 100% that you put on the curbside, 74% 74 goes to landfill because it has not been correctly separated either in recycling, composting, or the eco center. So it's everything that you've put on the site, on the curbside, that should have gone elsewhere, which is that 74%. So yes, so Tetra Pak, they developed their technology to make sure that they can, it can be recycled, which was not before, and now it can be, which is a good thing. But there's other, like the 10%, there's a lot, a lot of things now that it's still not either recyclable or compostable. For example, um, I always take, you know, the, the bartendes, the granola bars, yes. <laughs> Those, so the packaging of granola bars is not, it, it, there's nothing you can do other than just put it in the waste. It, for example, chip bags also, and there's different things that for now we cannot recycle, but I hope eventually that everything that's going to be put on the market will be able to be either recycled or composted.
Okay, so lots of confusion of what we can put in the bin. I will answer that a bit later, with, and I will give you some place that you can go get the answers. So why bother about our waste? Because it keeps increasing. Even if we have better service, more service, more recycling, more composting, more and more service, more technology, we just do more waste because we consume more, because we use more, because we throw out more. So we can see it, it was quite, quite the same like between 1960 and 1980. And after that, I, got, I guess it goes with the economy. The more we make money, the more we buy. The more we buy, the more packaging we make. The more packaging, the more waste we make. And the more we buy, the more we, we uh, throw out stuff that's still maybe good or still just because it's no good anymore, we throw it out, we buy another one. So it's really in this cycle that we are in, which makes the total quantity just increase all the time. Why bother also? Everything that we make just lasts a long time. <laughs> If we take, for example, um, some things that's more um, organic, like paper, uh, it's written in French, but it's a banana peel newspaper, it doesn't last that long because it's organic and it easily, nature can take care of it and degrade it, compost it. But when we go to stuff that the nature did not produce, like plastic, it can take up to I would say it's around 400 years for plastic to degrade. It does not decompose, it only degrades. So the, plastics, the plastic always stays in the nature. And that's where we always talk about, you know, the little islands. I don't know if people heard about the plastic islands all over the world, which is in the ocean actually, and it just gets there with all the currents. There are some plastic debris that are just floating there and making these big islands. You cannot go walk on it, but still it's a lot of pieces of plastic. And it's just going to stay there for a long time or until we go and clean it up. So plastic, what's funny about it, it's what we like about plastic when in the packaging, we don't like about plastic once it's in the nature. Because plastic is durable, it's light, it's cheap, it's, um, what else? No, well, that's about it. <laughs> it's durable, but it's re well, reusable to a point. But once, it's get, what in, once it gets in the nature, all these qualities are all his default uh -oh. faults. I, so it's durable. It stays in nature for a long time. It's um, light, so it's easily we can see the plastic tree. You know, sometimes there's plastic bags in trees, and it just lasts for a long time. So that's why we, don't, we need to take care of what we do and where we put our different materials. But here in Vaudreuil de Rion, you are really lucky. You don't know that, eh? Most people are like, why are we lucky? Um, because you have lots of services. You're really, I was looking at all the services you, you get to better sort your waste, and it's incredible everything that you guys get. So let's do a little review. So you have recycling every Wednesday. You have all your waste on Tuesday or Thursday, depending on your sector. You have this new friend here, the food waste which we're going to talk about in not that long. Every, it's the same day as your waste, so it's quite easy to remember. You have all your uh, bulk materials every third Tuesday every month. And there's your, um, the green waste, which is also on Tuesday or Thursday. And that's from May to November, which is a really long time during the year. And all this, is directly at your house. No efforts. And other that you have is the branch, the uh, Christmas trees, and you can also go to the Echo Center. And that's a lot of services in a city, and that's a lot of places where you can go bring your 
other stuff that's not picked up at your house. So if you have clothing, there is bins at the eco center where you can go give your old shirts that you don't need anymore because you don't like the color, you can just go bring it there. Um, and you can also bring either your batteries to different places, your, your uh, paints, um, the, um, the lights. So there's a lot of places where you can bring different stuff. And that's where if you do it all right, you should only have your 10% of materials that goes to waste. But you have to do the effort. Yes. But what I say is, we do like to go shopping, do we? Do we find it an effort to go shopping? Maybe Mr. Hira does. <laughs> but if we like to go shopping and we like to do that, I think it's, it's part of it. If we want to be the consumer, it's part of our consumer person to go after that, put the right things at the right place. Don't you find? Yeah. yeah. So let's talk about your new service, which is the food waste. Started on October 2nd or 4th, depending on if you're on a Tuesday or Thursday. And what's incredible here, it's, it's weekly. Every day, every day, every week of the year, you're gonna have that food waste pickup, which is different in other municipalities where sometimes even all winter, they just stop picking up. Here you have it all year. And another thing that's different here is it's a food waste pickup. So that's why you have a smaller bin. I don't know if you have some people from other cities that you know that got larger bins and they couldn't put anything in there, but here it's really food waste, so you have to keep this in mind. So here I'm sure there's going to be people that are going to ask a lot of questions. So I'm just going to put it clinging here. No plastic bags. So first thing to remember, and I think it's one of the Im most important thing, thing, is don't put any plastic bags in there. Point ball. So I got an example here. A nice person from the previous one gave me this and, well, look, Marlene, it says on it, it's um, biodegradable, recyclable, non-polluant, no, no polluant, and uh, it says on the packaging that I can use it for composting. Huh? You saw that? But no, you cannot use it. The only thing you can put in it is either this kind of bag, which is a paper bag, or no bag at all. Hmm. And those are very expensive, by the way. Yes, there's a question at the end, and I'll answer your question after. Uh, that plastic bag is uh, nature, nature sec. But what's happening is a lot, of co the, a lot of industries that put these bags on the market just are saying that, yes, they are recyclable and they are um, biodegradable and that they are approved for composting. But this is all marketing. Forget it. You cannot use them here. If you bought some, try to return it. Uh, if you can't, well, maybe you, you can use it in your home composting, which would be okay. But in this one, you cannot use it. Only, no, okay. So, I'll move backwards. So, <laughs> yes. You don't have to use a bag. Step one, you can just put it like that without any bag. Or you can try out this bag, which was given to you once when you got your little bin. This one, I, it's the only one I saw that does this kind of um, lining inside, which is not plastic, it's cellulose. And what it helps to do is just, if there's liquid in it, it's not gonna go through it as fast. But you could always use also um, 
a paper bag that you take at from the um, from IGA or any other grocer, or you can take those big bags that uh, Rona sells or anyone for the yard yard waste. And of course, yes, they are more expensive. This one, um, it's seven dollars for five bags. Those are the big ones. Somebody told me at Costco, they're selling ten bags for six dollars which is quite its recent, somebody just told me that. But it's not an obligation. You don't have to use the, those bags. The only thing I'm saying is if you want to use a bag, do not take a plastic bag. Just privilege the paper one. Or you can always just put newspaper in there. So if you want to just put newspaper at the bottom, then put your residues on top and then it's okay. As long as you can take uh, circulars, as long as they're not uh, the glossy ones, you can take that. Because I was told that there's not many newspapers anymore. So as long as they are paper bags, any kind, you can just put it in there. As long as there's no uh, plastics on it, or if there's any handles uh, that would be, if the handles are, car it's okay. Yes. Maybe you could sell those after. <laughs> I said maybe you could sold, sell those after once you come back. <laughs> so what can we put in the new bin? I guess this is the big... So what can you put in your do, new bin? Well, paper bags. <laughs> I had to put it again to make sure that you really understand it's paper bags. Every food waste, no, everything that you do as food waste can be put in that bin. So it could be the fruits, vegetables, the um, meat, fish, uh, chicken, the bones, uh, the, uh, the coffee, um, coffee grounds, thank you. Uh, you can put the tea bags in there. As long as the tea bags are not uh, in plastic, like David's tea, unfortunately, tea bags are in plastic, so you cannot put it in there. You can put Kleenex, you can... No, that's not food waste. I'm already down there. So everything that you do in the kitchen, either it's still good, usually we don't throw out good food, or if it's rotten, you can put it in there. So it's all food waste. Even if you haven't eaten all your, all your dish, you can just put it in there. You can also put everything that's uh, cheese, um, everything like the butter. That's pretty rare that we just put the butter in the waste, but <laughs> if ever it happens, you can do that. You can put... Um, oil, but just tiny bits of oil, better to take it with um, um, a scot towel. <laughs> Thank you. So it's better to just put some, tiny bits with a scot towel, but not just empty your oil in there because it's, that's not good. You can also put every uh, sanitary fibers like Kleenex, scot towels. Um, if you take off your makeup with um, cotton little tampons, you can put that in there. If you use uh, Q-tips, that it's all carton or uh, and carton and cotton, you can put it in there. So we just have to make sure that nothing that's non organics is not in there. So you can put everything that's really organic from inside your house. So what you cannot put in there is everything that looks like a plastic bag, even if it says compostable in it. So nothing that looks like plastic goes in there. Also, no uh, non-organic materials, of course. If ever you like to go at um, hunting, do not put any animal carcasses in there. The only reason is just because it's really, really big. But as I say always, a moose head does not fit in there anyway. And uh, you cannot put uh, any green waste. So that's really important. You cannot put any uh, leaves in there, grass, or anything like that. It's really, really waste from inside your house that you can put in it. Nothing green residue can go in there, even if it's from inside the house. So it's really called a food waste collection. So Think about food waste and think about everything that's surrounding the food waste. You do have a list that was sent to you. 
which is this one. And it's also available on the website, not with the same visual, but the list is there in, in English if you're not sure of what's written in there. So there's a lot of things that you can put in, in it. So I did make you some little simple steps. How to succeed. So did, does anybody have problems right now? It was Mr. that maybe there was a lot of water there, but not that many problems? Well, I'll still help you out just to make sure that it continues to go well. So steps for success. <laughs> so just to make sure that you did the right thing, First of all, once you've got your bin, I hope you put it in the kitchen because that's where you make the most of your food waste. If ever you've put it elsewhere, maybe just put it back in the kitchen. That's where it should be. <laughs> Or, and as I was saying to uh, the other group before, this is a tool. It's a tool that the city gave you to help you out. You do not have to use it. You can use it. If you think it's... Uh, too small, if you don't like the cover, if you don't like the color, if you don't like the thing, just use something else for inside. For example, I think it's too small for what, for what I use. I am a lazy person. I don't like to go every day outside to empty this thing. So what I did at my home is just I used a bigger, a bigger bin inside, which I can just go once a week. <laughs> Or maybe it's twice a week sometimes, but I go less. So it's really to you to start using, use it, see how you like it, and you can change it if you just don't like it. But it's a tool to help you out. Then you can either lay a newspaper inside or you can use this small bag that we gave, but it's not an obligation either. You can just put nothing in there. The only reason why we say to maybe put something, a lining on, on the bottom, is just that the food won't stick to it if you put a lot of food and you don't empty it really often. If you empty it every day, it just doesn't stick, so it's really easy to do. And there's also, if you want to go see on YouTube, uh, there's um, origami for those Um, how do you call it? It's origami for composting bins, which you can see videos of how you can do an origami if you really want to go to that way to do a little bag that fits in those bins. After that, you have to read the accepted materials to make sure that you are that you know what you need to put in there and you know what you can't put in there. And I suggest to you to read it more than once because sometimes the, uh, we remember simple things and we forget the other ones. So once we started to do it and it goes well, just read it again to make sure that we did not forget any materials. And there's also a little sticker that was given to you that you couldn't put on top of the bin, which is more easy to read than if you put it on fr in the front. Your larger bin, your new best friend here, you can put it outside, or you can even put it inside if you would like. It doesn't have to be left outside. I have friends that has bigger waste, uh, waste bins in their kitchen, so I don't see why we cannot just leave that. It's every week that we just pick it out and put it back in. But it depends how com comfortable you are with that. Um, if it's outside, well, of course, put it at a place where it's really accessible. You don't want it to put way far back your yard. You just want it to have it close by. And of course, during summertime, it's really important to put it in a shaded place because it's, it's um, less hot when it's shaded. Of. At this time of year, Shaded or not shaded, it doesn't matter. It's really during summertime that you need to find it a sweet place to be. Once your small bin is full, or sometimes I know some people just like to put it in there every day, you can just put it there and put it in your bigger bin. And of course, you have to keep smiling just to make sure that everything goes fine and that you're happy. And um, once it's your collection day, of course, you have to bring it to the curbside. And since it's small, nobody should really have any problems to 
roll it up to there. And what's really important is to unlatch, unlatch it the day of the, um, of the pickup. Why? It's just to help out the people that picks up the composting to go faster. If you forget it, what's going to happen? They're going to do it for you, don't worry. But the thing is, it's just to really try to think the morning to just unlock it, to just help the people that go, that's going to pick, up, pick it up. You had a question? <laughs> Oh yes, you have the the group raccoon that really wants to. Uh, yes, so what you can do is really wait in the morning, just the day of the curbside collection, to to unlatch it, and then if the raccoons keep coming, what they don't like is Vicks. You know the Vicks that we use when we have cold, so we just can put some on it, and it should leave them going away because they don't like that smell. And once, um, once it's emptied out, then you can just either rinse it if you need to rinse it, or else you can just put it back at its place and then you can relax. See, it's really easy. <laughs> it's starting late, you're not laughing at all. <laughs> yes. So you're preceding what I'm gonna say right now. Which is okay. So I would, <laughs> it's okay. So for people that are, did not understand at the back, uh, one trick is if you don't like, I'm just gonna go to the next one. What we don't like is everything that smells. We do not like the little flies or the little worms that can be in that composting. And what uh, Mrs. was telling me right now is what she does is just puts it in the freezer. So leaves it in the freezer. At first it was with the bin and now it's just with the bag, put it there. And during the, mor the morning of the pickup, it just takes it out from the freezer, puts it in the bin and the tour est joué. Which is a, it's a good idea if you have place, if you have a big freezer, or you can just leave it in, in the fridge. If you have to do a fridge, um, a cleanup, don't do it like the day after the pickup, just wait the day before the pickup to make sure that there's no smell that maybe comes out. But what you can do either to, to make sure it doesn't smell is to wrap everything that's more od odorant, like uh, the fish, like um, chicken, which, so everything that's meat, it's gonna smell a bit more. So you can just wrap it in newspaper. So you don't have to buy bags, just wrap it in newspaper, put it in there. Or uh, other thing you can do is, um, once you've put it in your bin, you can just put a newspaper on top, which is also gonna help out. Which is really important is, even if you don't have that much in there, just put it on the side of the road the day of the pickup every week. Because if you wait, if you, you look at it one week, it's, oh, it's not that empty, I'll just leave it there. The week after, you will not like what you're gonna see that much. Much more if you go on vacation for a couple of weeks, two, three, four weeks, and you forgot that you had stuff in there, and then you come back after four weeks and you open it up during summertime, you are not gonna like what's in there. Because it's gonna be hot, there, then there's gonna be flies, there's gonna be worms, there's gonna be odors, and everything that you don't like is gonna be there. So that's why you really need to do it every week you put it on the side of the road, it picks up, rinse it if you need it, then you bring it back in. Even if you have just a tiny bit in the bottom, it's better to do that because that's what's gonna help out, that's what's gonna help not getting all the things that you don't want. Ordinary paper bags you can use. And it's the same thing for the newspaper or the circulars, everything that's non-glossy you can use. You can put it in there. Of course, we want to recycle it before we put it in there, but if it's going to help us to eliminate the odors, eliminate the, maybe the flies that's going to come there, then yes, we can put it in there. You can also use, if you call for pizza, the pizza box can be also of help. You can put it in there also. So what you need to do is take the right decision on where to put your stuff.
So what you should do if you're not sure where it goes, well, you can go here on the website of Ville de Vaudreuil d'Orient, and it has all the information on what you can put and where you can put it, not only on the food waste, but on everything, which you can put in recycling, at the eco-center, uh, where you can bring your clothes. So everything that you need to know is on this nice website, the nice little house. And what's your role as a citizen? Put the right stuff in the right place. So to make sure that you know where it goes, and of course it's not going to be from day one that you're really going to know what you do, but it's just to keep informed and go back and make sure to, make, to look at what you put in your waste and to see what you can do to take the more out of your waste. And of course there is benefits of reducing your waste. You can reduce the cost, it's better for your health and better for the environment. And just a simple, a little way how you can reduce or reach zero waste, which we saw that we are at 10%, but what could we do? How could we go up to zero to that? So there's lots of things we need to, to do to be sure to, well, to reach that zero waste. We already know the three R's, like reduce, reuse, recycle, which is like this is a song that just goes in. And, but I've decided to add a lot of re, rethink, refuse. For example, if they're giving out stuff that you don't really want, just say no. People will understand, maybe, maybe you're going to have to explain why, but just say no. You can reduce, repair, like for example, if uh, I'm trying to think when. Hmm. An iron. An iron. Yeah, you can repair it. You can see, it. well, a toaster, it's difficult to be repaired, but if you can find somebody to repair it, sometimes it, it always feels like it's cheaper to just buy a new one, but sometimes it's really, if you repair it, it's cheaper than just try to repair it. Of course, reuse, recycle, and reinvent. How can we reduce our waste? Well, for starters, we can stop using single-use items like uh, bags, bottle, um, water bottles, or the coffee cups. All these things that are short used, used shortly, and then ends up at our, in our waste because almost all of them, yes, the, um, the water bottle is recyclable, but still water from the faucet is good. And it doesn't cost anything, or it costs not much. How can you reduce your waste? Of course, is think reusable. So instead of buying things that are that you use and then throw out not long after, you just go and buy things buy things that you can reuse after and after and after. For example, well, we have the coffee cups, the water bottles, and you, you can also go to. Um, we don't really see it much here. This is a straw, and this one is. Um, a zero waste lunch where we can just use plastic or other packaging, reusable packaging to put our stuff in it. How can you reduce your waste? You can also, just going to put them all, um, focus on large containers. Did you know that small yogurts are not recyclable? A lot of people put them in there because, oh, it's plastic to answer the question of what can we put, what type of plastics, it's really, really different. So all number six plastic we cannot put in the recycling bin, but to the opposite, if you use, if you use the large containers, those ones are made of recyclable plastics. And they are cheaper at the end if you buy bigger ones and you put them in smaller reusable containers, it's, it's cheaper. So it's better for your wallet. Um, buy less packaging. The, uh, the bigger ones are number one. Number two? Oh, number two. Two or five. If you look under, you'll see. Um, six is no good. You know, like the devil, six. <laughs> so you can put one, two, four, five, seven. Yes. 
And uh, what else? Buy less packaging. So if you see, like you see in this picture, a banana packaged, well, just don't buy it. Try and find a banana which is not packaged because it always already have their own natural packaging. And I see that often where we can, it's quite difficult to buy non-packaged, especially fruits and vegetables. Um, favor recyclable packaging. If you have the choice between two things, just take the one that has a recyclable packaging in it. Uh, do it yourself and you can buy, buy or sell used items on Kijiji or Leipac. To learn more, well, you can read one of my books, but they're all in French, so maybe if you don't want to read in French. I tried to have them translated, especially the last one, but I don't know why my editor just never came back to me, but I'm working on it. If you want to learn more, there's different websites that you can go on. Uh, all of them also have um, English information on it, so I just you can take a picture and go see it. For example, Tricentris here is where all your recyclables go. So if you want to see what they really accept, you can go on that website and they have the list of all the recyclable materials that they accept. Uh, Tricentris, is, is that a, a central site in Quebec? Or? Tricentris has three recycling plants. It's not a recycling, it's a centre de tri. It's a triage. triage, yes. And they have three in Quebec. So a lot of worries are that, do, what do I, no, the things I put in my bin, does it actually get recycled? And I would, yes, it is, and they are not receiving too much. They are receiving what they, well, they always want to have more, because the more they get, the more they can sort, and the more they can sell. So it's, it's not a problem. Well, thank you for helping me out to uh, not invent too much words. <laughs> thank you. I hope you appreciate it, appreciated it, and uh, if you have any questions, you can all, always call the city and they will be there to answer you. you. Have a nice evening. Thank you. Thank you.